What is up everybody, Gary Simon here. Today we're gonna to be talking about radial gradients. Can we actually make a radial gradient look good in terms of modern UI design? So we'll be going through a few examples and a few do's and don'ts. And you know what? I think we can actually pull it off. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe, check out designcourse.com. I'm gonna stop talking, let's get started. Ah, but wait one second. I know a lot of you are struggling UI designers. And if that is the case, you definitely need to check out my UI design bootcamp at scrimba.com. At scrimba, you don't just watch videos. No, no, no. You're actually able to modify code in the browser while you learn. My course on UI design features over 100 lessons that are specifically tailored to help you become an awesome UI designer, and they're packed with interactive challenges. So what you need to do is click the very top link here in the YouTube description, and you will get access to my UI design bootcamp, along with many other courses for a low monthly fee. All right, so here I'm in Adobe XD, Goose Fink, Figma, whatever you want. We're just gonna see if we can get radial gradients to look good, all right? So we're first gonna start off with this simple button and adding a radial gradient to the background. Now, just to I uh, save a copy of this, I'm just gonna duplicate this. And let's see if we can make a radial gradient based on the background. Now, I will say this, you should never use a radial gradient for something like text. Nine times out of 10, it's just not going to look good. Um, or icons for that matter. So the background of something like, you know, a card background or the website background or a button background, something like that is what you could try. So let's go over here in Adobe XD. We just come out here and we choose radial gradient. Now this, the default radial gradient that's applied here, as you could see, if we look at the color stops, it's basically, if we look at the hue selector right here and we choose this one versus this one, it doesn't change the hue. The only thing it's doing is it's adding shade or darkening the hue. And fortunately, you know, that's not bad. However, there's a big difference between these two. And I would say that's just too much. I, I don't really like this particular aesthetic. However, I will say for, you know, accessibility purposes and being able to actually see this, um, it, the contrast here between the background and uh, the foreground and the background, is fine, um, but just in terms of general design trends, I really don't like what they've applied by default based on my color selection of that blue color. Um, so what could we do? Well, there's a, there's a number of things we can do to try to adjust this to make it something that's a little bit better. Now, my opinion is that you shouldn't create a, a gradient, and this is true just for linear gradient or a radial gradient, um, with color stops that have really significant uh, differences in terms of shade and tint, or in other words, darkness and lightness, um, or even the hues, like completely different hues or colors. It just doesn't look good. So we want small differences in order to make this work. So for here, maybe instead of uh, this particular dark color, uh, maybe we can come up a little bit lighter. And then we can take this and notice how it's kind of squashed it based on this element, uh, the, the size of the, the container, this button. So what we can do is we can come over here and we can drag this down and then kind of create a gradient that's more circular. And this is very, very subtle, as you can see. So if we compare these two, I personally like this just because I'm a, 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 I'm a fan of like the more flat design for the most part. But this here, it works as well. Could we go the reverse route? Maybe where we reverse these so that, um, let's see if we can move these over. Can we move these over? I'm not sure why you can't take the very left one and drag it over to the right and just reverse them. That's a little bit strange to me. Um, but what we can do uh, instead of that, so this is the darker one, this is the lighter one. So we can make this one the darker one and then maybe this one the lighter one. That I completely don't like. I just because I think if you're coming to if you're looking at the center, the center should generally speaking be lighter than what's coming out because the center's the focus and you want to bring light to the focus, right? If that makes sense. So this is kind of like what I would call an anti-pattern. I want to go where the darker uh, shade is in the middle. I would reverse that to this and that looks a lot better. 
All right, so what about if this was a button that uh, maybe was inverted in terms of being a lighter color button with darker uh, foreground elements like the text? So if we take this, we'll take these two, let's just make them black. All right, and then we'll take this and we're gonna really lighten these up. So we're gonna add tint. So maybe we'll add this real light right here and then maybe this one. Now notice this just looks bad. It's too different. It's, it's way too much difference in terms of the lightness and darkness or the, the tint and the shade. So we wanna adjust that so it, it's not a significant amount of a difference. So we might come over here Maybe instead of this being so almost white, we'll come down here and then maybe we'll make this a little bit darker. All right, so that can work completely fine as well. Now, one thing you can also do, let's take this and duplicate it. You can also adjust right here. We'll, we'll drag this uh, portion out. We can drag, add another color stop and maybe make this lighter. and then make this one slightly lighter in the middle. So you could do perhaps something like this. Maybe you take the, the, the end pieces and do something like that. So these all work and these are all radial gradients as you can see. All right, so let's try this out in the context of like a card. So let's duplicate this. And I'm going to grab a design I already have. In fact, I'm just gonna grab the whole artboard and paste it right here. All right, so here we have uh, a simple design based on a card layout with a button. So what if we wanted to create a radial gradient that's based on this actual background of the card? All right, so let us, uh, let's take this and just duplicate it. Put this over here. All right. So let's come over here. We'll choose radial gradient. That, why is that bad? Well, I'm gonna tell you why that's bad. I, it doesn't contrast well with, with the foreground elements. So it's just mid gray, kind of to the darker, and then going to light in the middle, horrendous. You want your gradients, whether the linear or radial, you want them to be an afterthought and almost not quite noticeable. You don't want massive differences. So let's adjust this. So the inner one is pretty much white, it looks like. Um, and we're dealing with a gray background. So whatever the background it's sitting on, it needs to contrast well with and work well as well. So this is just gray. So we can come over here. We wanna have a slight difference at least. We could drag this out. We can add another color stop here. Do I like that? Mm, I'm not sure. What if we change this background here? It's a little bit lighter, so we have just a bit more contrast. And this is something that you could possibly use. It's not like the worst thing you've ever seen. Uh, let us, let's duplicate this though. And let's delete this and let's see what these look like through, like in three columns. Just so we have a better idea of what these look like in a potential layout. So it's not really the worst thing that you've ever seen. It seems like it's something that could work. And again, the, the whole point of this is to simply make it barely noticeable. I mean, that's the way these work uh, best. Now, what if I, let's, let's do an example where we have all of these, except we're gonna make a dark color scheme. So we'll come out here. Uh, maybe we'll add in a little bit of tone and, and hue. So like this bluish right here works well. We'll take this background just for the time being, make it a solid color. Um, let's change to solid and we'll just push this up. We'll take these elements inside here, make them white. Maybe we want, we'll take this one and get that and just give it a little bit of color here and tone. All right, so what if we wanna use a gradient 
uh, radial rather gradient for this background. This actually isn't too bad. What if we really took it up like this? That's actually kind of cool. And you know what you could do? Positioning it differently. Ah, I kind of like that. Kind of brings light to the title, which is, in terms of visual hierarchy, the most important element. I don't really like where it's going in terms of being completely black or almost black, so we could bring that down just a bit. That's really cool. Hey, that's cool. I actually kind of like that. So positioning the radial gradient as well, uh, it seems like it would make sense too. So we can just pull this out, see what this looks like side by side. Very, very cool. I like that one. All right, so let us also experiment with doing a radio granny on the background. So we've gone from a button to a card. Now let's do a large one for an actual background. Now it might be too much in the context of these already having gradients too, but we're gonna try it anyhow on this dark background. And then we will sum this up. All right, so this is doing that anti-pattern thing, right? Where there's a dark in the center and light to, the, we wanna reverse that. So what we can do is we'll just take this one. Um, let's choose, I may have to play around with these colors. Uh, let's uh, come right here. And then we'll take this one and we'll make it darker. That actually is not entirely bad. Um, let's exit out of there. Oops, let me get back here. So if we t select this uh, right here and go over here, we can take this little selector here and we can really make it circular. And that actually looks fairly decent. If we duplicate this and maybe make these solid background color, it might look a little bit less busy. So so I like the contrast in the middle, but if you look over here, contrast is a little bit strange between the card and this background. Um, and this is just a matter of playing around with it. I mean, we could fix it by coming out here and really just making this larger. We could also take uh, the darker color stop and making it lighter. And there you go. So now we have a radial background. Again, it's extremely subtle, but it looks and works pretty well. Awesome, awesome stuff. All right, hopefully you enjoyed that. Now, if you did, I need you to do just a couple things. Obviously, give a comment, let me know what you think, give a like, give a subscribe, make sure you click the bell notification. Uh, isn't this so annoying? Everybody does this, but it, it's proven to work, so I'm sorry. I'm just, I, 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 have to, I have to put myself out there for the longevity of this business. Anyhow, also, I'm going to be launching designcourse.com very soon. Make sure you go there to put your email if it's not already launched, depending on when you're watching this. And if it's already launched, well, you certainly need to join. I'll see you all soon. Goodbye. Yeah.